Hello everybody. Today we're going to be reacting to World War II by Oversimplified Part 1. Oops. Turn this up a bit. Churchill was a man with many talents. He was an artist, a butterfly enthusiast, and he had an unpublished manuscript about aliens. Clearly, he was a man with an insatiable thirst for knowledge. Maybe he could have loaded up his computer and logged onto Skillshare, an online learning community with more than 19,000 classes in design. Churchill was stupid. Seriously, he was not very smart, especially, I forgot what the battle was called. Um, he had, he had this not very smart plan to land in Italy to get past the, um, like this line of defense. He thought he could just, you know, naval invade, like, right above that line, and then basically just win the war. Like, his plan was so overgeneralized. And also, his plans for post-World War II were just weird. He wanted to recreate Austria-Hungary for some reason. I don't know why, and all these other weird things. He's weird, okay? Business, technology, and more. Perhaps he was considering a side career in fashion, but didn't know where to start. On Skillshare, he would find courses in fashion design and garment construction. Or if he wanted to learn app design, improve his photography, or just how to make a really good quesadilla, he would have found courses for all of these and more on Skillshare. Skillshare gives access to high-quality classes taught by genuine experts working in their business available Let's skip this. like this. For an annual subscription, for oversimplified viewers, the first 1,000 people were just now with young man by the name of Ferdinand. It's 1902. A young man by the name of Benito Mussolini moves to Switzerland to avoid military service. He gets busy with socialism, working for trade unions, writing for socialist newspapers, advocating a violent overthrow of European monarchies, the whole shebang. Huh? This gets him in a bit of trouble with the Swiss police, so he gets arrested, sent back to Italy, set free, returns to Switzerland. Arrested again, goes back to Italy again, completes his military service after previously avoiding it, and then after a brief stint as an elementary school teacher, he finally returns to work what? as an avid socialist. Why an elementary school teacher? And what the heck was he doing? His speeches and journalistic abilities made him famous among Italian socialists. He was anti-war, so when Italy colonized Libya in 1910, he rioted and got arrested. Then World War One took anti-war. That seems odd. Like, what happened in World War II then? And once again, he protested Italy's involvement. But then he thought, wait a minute, this war could bring about the social climate needed to overthrow European monarchy. And bring oh, and now he's all of a sudden pro war. Okay. The socialist revolution everywhere. And suddenly he was pro war. But his fellow wow. socialists didn't. So he's, so he's only pro war because it fits his ideology. He didn't like his new pro war stance, so they kicked him out of the party. So then he said, you know what? I'm done with socialism. We need something new, not based on class division, but based on unique nationality. We'll conquer the Mediterranean and reunite all Italian people, just like what? Wasn't Italy just recently unified anyway? Like I think in the eighteen sixties, Italy got unified. What are you talking about? And Italy, um, Italian wasn't really an ethnicity or. It was just, it, the Italian Peninsula was just a collection of different ethnicities. And now today, it's a lot more intertwined. And I guess you could say there's an Italian ethnicity there, Italian language. Um, but it just, it just seems weird. What do you mean, you reunite, reunite all the Italian peoples? The Roman Empire! Like... I don't know. It's just like it. It's like Mussolini wanted to recreate the Roman Empire. Obviously, he feels really bad about just why. Guide the Italian nation to greatness. That's what we're in business to make here. What kind of haircut am I giving you? Let's go with bold. Oh my God.
I didn't need to see that. Thank you. Wow, okay. Thank you for that weird... Okay. Italy had been on the winner's side in World War One, and they hoped they were going to get a lot out of it. Wait a minute. Italy had... What? Russia... There's, Russia was not a winner at all, by any means. They lost more land than probably everyone else combined. I'm not even kidding. In Russia, they went through a violent revolution. And, you know, Poland was set free, Ukraine was set free for a time. Part of the Caucasus was set free for a time. Um, Finland got independent, and so did all the Baltic countries. They were no by no means a winner, even though they were on the Entente. I mean, after the war, they weren't really the Russian Empire anymore. They were just the Soviet Union. But, I mean, what? They weren't, they weren't a winner. You know? been on the winner's side in World War One, and they hoped they were going to get a lot out of it, but in the end, they only got a little. And okay, well, first of all, um, that's not what South Tyrol looks like, or Trio, whatever. And, wow. They definitely did not get as much as they were expecting. Wow. That is, like... That is, like, only a third of what they expected. And I think the Allies, they tried to, um, compensate for that by giving them some of their colonies to Italy, which is why Libya, like, I think it doubled in size or something. It got way larger. Because France and Britain were giving them land because Italy was not very happy with what they had gotten in Cold War One, And they felt cheated. On top of that, a bad economy. And weak governments meant that the Italian people were a little unhappy. So when Mussolini came along and said that he could fix everything, his fascist movement gained a lot of support. Oh gosh, that sounds familiar. In 1922, he went to the king and said, Make me prime minister, or I'll make me prime minister. And the king said, You and what army? This army. Oh, wow. Fair enough. Then he went to... Why are they all bald, except for the king? ...about establishing a dictatorship with himself at its center. Europe had its first fascist dictator. Next up, Germany. Germany had been on the Luther side, and they got absolutely wrecked by the Treaty of Versailles. They lost territory, had to demilitarize the Rhineland, had to reduce their army to just 100 And the Rhineland was occupied for a while, and so was the Ruhr, like literally their most industrial place. Well, not just the Ruhr, but the Rhineland. The Rhineland and the Ruhr, they were the, that was like the industrial heartland of Germany. And I don't know, that's important, that's a very important. And the Saarland was independent until uh, 1935. What? Oh, great. It's an ad. On top of that, a bad economy and weak governments meant that when a small angry man with a silly mustache came along... Wait a minute. Well, I guess we're talking about the Great Depression. But I mean, before the Great Depression, Germany was actually, at least on paper, getting back on their feet. Um, industrially and economically. Like, in the 20s, they were actually doing pretty okay. And said that he could fix everything? The German people never had been a soldier during the war. And he was crazy patriotic, and nobody was madder than him about Germany's humiliation. He helped start a new political party, and in 1923, attempted a march on Munich with his boys. And then he got arrested. But his popularity oh, yeah. grew and grew, and in 1933, the president made his chancellor. He believed he was Germany's great destiny savior, and he went full megalomania, <laughs> establishing a dictatorship with himself at its center. Europe had fascist dictator number two. Hitler and Mussolini had a lot of the same ideas, but more important... Well, let's look at these. Had fascist dictator number two. Hitler and Mussolini had a lot of the. Okay, yep. National socialism is anti socialist. Okay. Um, it would be more accurate to say anti communist. Because I know this is extremely controversial. But, um. Hitler was actually a socialist, and. So was Mussolini, sort of. It, it doesn't make sense for Mussolini to be from 
socialists, and then all of a sudden not be socialists anymore. What? That, that doesn't make any sense. It was just different. It was a different kind of socialism. Let's see what else. We thought he was racist. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess he was. Yeah, he was. The same idea, but more importantly, they had the same enemy, and they started to get along. Anyone else want to be friends? Franco? No? You good? I do. Who's that? It's. Wait. Okay. Anyone else want to be friends? Franco? Okay. Spain. Well, let's talk about national of Spain. So, of course, in 1936, the Spanish Civil War happened. It says that right there. Sorry. It was um, the communists, even though they're Democrat. I mean, they're, um, yeah, I guess Democrats is the right word. You know, they were democratic people and socialists. And they were against the nationalists. Really. Nationalists. Not all of them were nationalists. And same thing with the Republicans. Not all of them were communists. Like, in fact, most of them were Democratic advocators. And also, what is wrong with these Balearic Islands right here? Those are part of Spain. They're not. Why are they not colored? And to be. Oh, goodness. Okay. So the Spanish Civil War happened in 1936. The Starland was annexed in 1935, so it doesn't make sense that it's independent. And Germany and Italy, they supported them through sending divisions as volunteers and, you know, their Air Force. And Nationalist Spain, they wanted to join Germany. They wanted to join the Axis. But, um, of course, they, the reason why they didn't was because Spain was very poor. And they basically demanded um, that Germany give them all, this, all these resources, oil and food. But at the time, Germany, they didn't have any of those resources. Their people were pretty much starving, and they had a massive oil, like... Shortage. And that's basically the reason why they lost World War II, because of their massive oil shortage, and um, they didn't have any food. And especially, you know, they, it makes sense. They were covering this massive extended territory. Um, another thing, uh, Britain, they were, they, they were planning to invade the Blairic Islands as soon as Spain wanted to enter, and Spain was aware of that. So yes, Spain did want to join the Axis, they wanted to be friends, but it just really didn't work out because Spain was poor, and they just got through a civil war. No, you good? I do. Who's that? It's Japan, and they've taken over northern China. Well, technically, Germany was kind of friends with China, they said one of their generals. Let's rewind a bit. Japan had isolated itself from the rest of the world for over 200 years until the Americans showed up and said you're going to trade with us and you're going to oh, like yes. it. Then the Western powers imposed a bunch of unequal treaties, meaning Japan's economy was bust. They also had no natural resources, so they decided to go get some. They went to war with China and oh, the sphere of influence over Korea, and they took a bunch of China's stuff. But then the West said, hey, cut that out. And since Japan couldn't take on the West, they said, okay, I guess we'll just go home. Wait a minute, what are you doing? Taking advantage of a weakened China and setting up spheres of influence. Yes, yeah, so that's pretty much what happened. But I was the one who weakened them. We know. And you guys didn't let me have anything. We know. That seems unfair. We don't think so. Okay, see ya. So Japan thought, screw this, and went to war with Russia. And oh, started yeah. to won by actually winning. Then they fully annexed Korea, but they... Well, actually, I think Russia was the one who declared war. Although I could be mistaken. I do not know for sure that. That was just, you know, what I thought. I don't really know for sure. But I'm pretty sure it was Russia who declared war on Japan first. Let me stop there. In World War One, they took Germany's colonies and islands in Asia. And then in an incident that was newly staged by the Japanese army, a bomb blew up a Japanese train in Manchuria, giving them an excuse to launch an invasion and take over. So here's the situation. Wait a minute. They used the wrong flag. Is that the Republic of China flag that they used? Nazi Germany, fascist Italy, and Japan all believe they're racially superior. All feel hostility towards allies and all want to militarize and take over more stuff and so they did let's start with germany 
Hitler hated the Treaty of Versailles, and yeah. now he was ready to begin on doing it. In complete violation of the treaty, the first Luftwaffe squadrons were set up, conscription was introduced, and he pent up his army. The Allies did nothing. Then Hitler sent his army back into the demilitarized Rhineland, giving orders to... Why, did they not, why have they not annexed the Tsar yet? The Tsar place, the country right, that little country right there. Retreat if the Allies showed up. The Allies did nothing. With his military restrengthened, he could now move on to step two. He wanted to rapidly increase the Aryan population, and to do so, he needed Lebensraum. Or in other words, he would have to take over the world. But for now, a good portion of Europe would do, and he began eyeing up his neighbors. The Allies finally started to get worried, so they implemented a fairly useless diplomatic strategy called appeasement. And it went a little something like this. Hitler would say, I want that thing. And the Allies would say, you can't have that thing. Okay, you can have that thing, but no more. I want that thing. Okay. And repeat. In 1938, Hitler's army marched into Austria and just took it with no resistance. Boom. This is Germany now. Yeah, that was kind of interesting because the Austrian, um, the Austrians, they were fine with it. Like, they wanted it to happen because, of course, they were also a German country. Um, and of course, the only reason, the, probably the main reason why it didn't happen earlier um, actually, no, that's, it, it was because he was forbidden, but the president of Austria, he didn't want unification. He was the, he was one of the only ones that opposed it because he didn't like Hitler very much. Because, you know, he was, um, fascist. with many ethnic Germans. The Allies held a meeting with Hitler. Said, look, we're going to give you what. Hang on. This meeting is about my territory. Shouldn't I come to the meeting too? Yeah. Anyway, we're going to give you what you want. Really? Yeah. Just like that? Yep. What's the catch? Just sign this piece of paper promising you won't invade the rest of Czechoslovakia. Okay. Then Chamberlain returned home victorious, waving his signed piece of paper in the air, declaring crisis to be averted and the continuation no. of world peace. And we built a statue of Chamberlain in his honor, and every day on the 30th of September, oh, we celebrate boy. Chamberlain Day. Who is invading the rest of Czechoslovakia? What? He's invading the rest of Czechoslovakia. Oh. You lied to me. What do you expect? I'm Hitler. Not the rest of Czechoslovakia. Hungary invaded, um... Carbathia, Ruthenia, or whatever it's called, and... Southern Slovakia, because those were... Most of those areas had ethnic Hungarians in them, and they had it before World War II. I mean, they had it. I mean, they had those lands in World War One, and they're just yeah. That's and also Poland. They also took a tiny piece of land, so it wasn't just Germany. Not to be outdone, Mussolini. Also, they didn't annex it. They sort of made it into a integrated puppet state, sort of. It wasn't, you know, completely technically annexed. And oh goodness, um. Slovakia right here, as I just said, um, Southern Slovakia was given to Hungary, Carpet, Ruthenia was given to Hungary, and Slovakia was made a puppet state of Germany. He also wanted to get in on the action. He thought to himself, isn't there a not yet colonized nation somewhere which is so underdeveloped that the Oh yeah, also, okay, listen. This, whenever Germany um, took over Czechoslovakia, or at least... Czechia, the Czech part of it, um, that was like 1939, right? Italy, they took over where the nation they're about to say, Abyssinia or Ethiopia, in 1936. ...with literal bows and arrows and wooden spears. Oh, there is? Fantastic. And so he took it. Italy also wanted to control the entrance to the Adriatic Sea, so they occupied Albania. Then, in another incident which was a major case by the Japanese, gunfire was exchanged by Japanese and Chinese troops at the Marco Polo Bridge, and the Japanese launched yet another invasion against oh, China. Boy. They swept through Beijing and Shanghai, and then advanced through the Yangtze Valley to China's then capital, Nanjing. It was here that saw the worst of Japan and shocking oh, atrocities yeah. committed against the Chinese. I made a video about this. Um, I made a video about this. It was about Japan's war crimes and how they pretty much went unnoticed. Yeah, you should check that out. Back in Europe, Germany and Italy made the relationship that oh, was official. Thank you. Thank you for having that. They, they made it so it's accurate now with Hungary and Germany. By signing the Pact of Steel. Then, in 
Then, Hitler turned his eyes towards Poland and the hated Polish corridor splitting Germany in two. Yeah. At this point, the Allies really had to put their foot down, and they warned him that an What? Why? Wait, oh. Corridor splitting Germany in two. At this point, the Allies really... <laughs> what? Interesting. Really had to put their foot down, and they warned him that an invasion of Poland would mean war. Hitler had planned to continue his advance eastward, but he didn't want to end up fighting a war on two fronts. So for now, he made an alliance with Stalin, saying, "How about we both invade Poland and split it between the two of us?" And I definitely will not refrain from not betraying him sometime. Well, that wasn't really an official answer. Pretty much just a non-aggression pact, and then making plans for the countries they're going to invade. Sounds. Why does he look like that? This new line stunned the West. On the 1st of September 1939, German troops entered Poland, and Britain and France declared war on Germany. The Poles fought hard, but they were no match for the two giants crashing down on them from either side. Then came a period known as the Phony War, where everyone just sort of sat around not doing much. Why, don't, why doesn't Germany control Memo? They don't control Memo. Which is part of Lithuania right now. Side. Then came a period known as the Phony War, where everyone just sort of sat around not doing much. The French had launched a small invasion into the Saarland, but they maintained mostly defensive positions, and after a while, decided to just turn around and call it a day. Exactly! That just baffles me. The French, their military was very strong, and very large as well. Of course, they had their mistakes with um, their commanders, and their... The, a lot of their equipment was outdated. But overall, they could easily take um, the Germans, who, and the German army was still underprepared. They didn't really think they would react to the Allies. They didn't think that they would really react, so Hitler's army was very underprepared. And um, they even had a hard time going through Poland because of logistics. I guess that's a major theme of why they lost World War II, because of logistics. It's just, why, why France? Um, the, the fact that they did nothing is, they could have easily taken down Germany in World War II, it would have been over. Speaking of France, the French were still super proud of their victory in World War I, and they hadn't really moved on from it. They still used horses, they dispatched messages by motorbike instead of using radio, orders from the commander-in-chief were usually pretty vague, and the troops oh. were rarely inspected. They built a line of defenses along their German border, but didn't bother extending it all the way to the camp. Uh, wait a minute. Wait, wait a second. Never mind. Never mind. I was gonna say that actually they did, but I don't know. Wouldn't launch artillery strikes against Germany out of fear of being retaliated against. Are you kidding me? You don't want to shoot at the enemy because they will shoot back. That's the point of a war. That's the point of a war. Are you kidding me? In a war, we didn't want to attack the enemy. And at first, the UK wasn't much better. Chamberlain still naively hoped that the war could be ended diplomatically. When is Churchill going to enter? Instead of bombing raids, the RAF dropped propaganda leaflets over German cities, what? which one air marshal said likely did nothing but provide the continent with toilet paper for the duration of the war. They also only sent 200,000 men to France, while the French had mobilized millions. Both Britain and France wanted to avoid a repeat of the First World War, and so they wanted to keep the war as far from home as possible. So they turned their eyes north, towards Norway. So Sweden was exporting iron ore to Germany through neutral Norway, so the Allies asked them if they could please stop exporting iron ore to Germany, but this request was refused. Then, the Soviet Union attacked Finland, so the Allies said, how about we land troops in Norway and move them across Sweden to go help out your good pal Finland, and along the way they take control of all your arms. So Norway and Sweden still said no, so the UK mined the waters around Norway to force any transport ship into international really? waters, and also attacked the German tank in the area. Hitler realized that the Allies were operating quickly enough to the supply of iron ore. He launched an invasion through Denmark to how? How? The German Navy was horrible. How did they make it past the British Royal Navy and invade? Like, I'm just so stunned about how quickly they did it. The Allies rushed to land troops at seaports along the coast, but Germany had taken control of Norway's airfield, and their air superiority decided to fight. 
the Allies had to retreat. After this slightly embarrassing failure, Chamberlain resigned and was replaced with Winston Churchill. Finally. A slightly different approach to dealing with it. Hitler's overall strategy was similar to Germany's First World War strategy. Attack France, defeat France, knocking out the UK in the process, then turn on the Soviet Union and win the war. During the phony war, the Allies had given Hitler time to prepare his forces. Now yeah. he was ready was to attack. So the Allies had wanted to place troops in Belgium, but Belgium had refused. And in a move that surprised pretty much no one, Hitler launched an invasion to get around France's defenses. The Allies charged into Belgium at Bruges. German invasion head on, and it looked like a repeat of the First World War was coming. But this time, Hitler had a trick up his sleeve. Yeah. Blitzkrieg. As the Germans advanced, they sent thousands of refugees westward, slowing really? down the Allies. Then, to the south, the French had left the Ardennes, an area full of hills and forests, pretty underdefended, because they thought it was naturally impenetrable. Well, the Germans were about to penetrate it with everything they had. They smashed 50 Wehrmacht divisions through, 50? and then circled the Allied armies at lightning speed. The best of the Allied forces were now 50? trapped. The Germans squeezed in from Dang. all sides, taking out French. Best army. 50 divisions, that's like 500,000 troops or so. And nearly wiping out the British too, but they managed to make a desperate last minute escape at Dunkirk with British civilians. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, thanks to Hermann Goering, who is not the smartest at all. He is saying to Hitler, Oh, we can just bomb them, it's alright, let, let, let's just bomb them. So then. All the rest of your troops, all the rest of your panzers or whatever could take a rest. We'll bomb them. And that failed. Well, it did some damage. But that failed. Come on, Goering. Then you make this like a similar mistake at Stalingrad. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna supply all your the sixth army at Stalingrad. And then they get and and then they get completely annihilated. Come on, dude. And that's why the uh, British were able to escape and the French. With most of the French forces depleted, the Germans breezed through, taking Paris, and France fell. What the Germans couldn't do in World War One, Hitler had done just yeah. like that. It that was thanks to... And that wasn't even because Germany was like... And that wasn't because Germany was really good. It was because they were really lucky because France is really stupid and, and Britain. Of well, that's not true. Germany, um, the fact that they, um, were, that they actually adapted is, that's probably why it wasn't just purely luck. It would also lose hope and secrecy, but quite annoyingly, it didn't, and he needed to secure the Western Front, so he tried to force them into submission with mind games. The UK was now all alone, and Hitler wanted to emphasize that. First of all, just before France fell, Italy finally declared war on the Allies, making the UK situation even worse. Next, he finished with the occupying all of France. He occupied the coastal areas for defense, but allowed France to continue existing as a German puppet state. This way, it looked like the UK's old ally had decided to switch sides. Really? Hitler also hoped that the UK wouldn't attack any other old allies' navy bases or colonies in Africa, giving Hitler an extra line of defense to the south. The UK made sure to respond to this by sailing down to France's navy base in Algeria and wrecking a bunch of ships. So have at it. Hitler then began laying down plans for an invasion of Great Britain before German troops could land up. Yeah, not very smart. So why would... No, that's a horrible idea. You can't naval invade Britain. You, you can't. Your navy is horrible. Even if you do manage to make a naval landing and capture some land how are you gonna get the supplies to britain through the english channel without any of the ships getting sunk yeah. and even with um even if you try to air supply it would still not work for the RAF's ability to defend the nation, and it looked like Hitler's great British invasion was coming. But then, Churchill ordered a small, pretty insignificant bombing raid over Berlin. Oh, it didn't gosh. do much damage, but Hitler was furious, and he immediately ordered the Luftwaffe to focus its attacks on civilian targets in London. Children were sent off to the countryside, away from their parents to avoid danger, and frequent trips to air raid shelters became a daily occurrence. But British morale held firm, smiling, knitting, lounging casually, these people have balls of steel. This refocusing on London also gave the RAF breathing space to reorganize, so Hitler kind of shot himself in the foot there. Just a foot for now. 
Finally, the Luftwaffe sent one massive all-out attack on London, and the RAF successfully repelled it, destroying many of the German aircraft and placing air superiority firmly in British hands. Oh, wow. Hitler's invasion had to be postponed, but the bombing of British cities continued for some time. Okay, well, thank you all for watching, and goodbye.